Perfect. I don't even know. Okay. I don't know. Do you guys like get special treatment when you go to the doctor? No, yeah, like, you lollipops. Yeah, you're, you're not. You're not in festive. Absolutely. You know what? Yeah. Does it look like a care? I'm festive enough. I have my no shaving. You need. Stash you need on. some. Stat eye protection. You've got like peach fuzz. You need eye protection. Peach. This is dangerous. Yeah, seriously. What if the light explodes? I'm not good. You got your teeth protected, at least. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Alright, welcome to Q&A episode part yeah. 7. Yeah, it's been recording this whole time. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Karma's a bitch, isn't it? Welcome to Q&A episode 7, where this is the series where we take your questions off the comments you'd like to leave in our, on our Facebook page or on our YouTube comment section. We take them off, cut them up, throw them in our ammo box, which has been deemed by you guys the question and answer box. It's gonna fall. Question, actually, question and ammo box, my bad. Better not fall. We're very... Yeah, That's fine. Fall. It's not gonna fall. It better no, not. It's, it's fine. Okay. Alright, so... Before we begin, you may be wondering why we're wearing all of our gear. I really don't know, actually. You can ask these two. It was our idea. It was his idea. Yeah, my idea. <laughs> <laughs> it was my idea. Yeah, I'm starting to regret this now, aren't we? Anyway! No, I, I love this stuff. You I, like I this like, no, you look legit. You I look lounge legit. in my stuff. I'm like... I just like wanna... I was like, if you guys aren't dragging me into this, I'm like, I'll put a helmet on. That's about it. I got my... Nice and delicate patch on here. Anyway, I don't care. We're going to the first question. I'll start it off. First question comes to us from... i got to scooch in here a little bit. Here. The Florida Airsoft Group, and they want to know, where do you get the... Where'd you get that ammo can? Actually, we got this... I got these at an Army-Navy store, but if you go to gun shows or anything, they sell these things for like 15 bucks. Real cheap. Real, they're dirt cheap, but they love them because you can just like throw mags in them, BBs, uh, equipment, attachments, whatever you need to throw in them. 15 bucks. Yeah, Counterweights. Yeah, you can buy them online too, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> All so, surplus. Surplus stuff like that. Army Navy store pretty much be 10 bucks. You can probably pick them up for they're really, and they're really, ugh, they're really in good condition as well, so. You wanna go for one? Oh, I can grab it. I can't find it. Yeah, okay. Luke, it's so big. Okay. Oh wow, that's a large question. Swet, Swet, Swenson. Yes, once in okay, two weeks ago. Okay. He said, okay guys, what do you think is more of a better buy? A support M249 or a DMR conversion of an Echo 1 M8 A3? And then also, which is better, gas or AEG rifles? Alright, let's break this down. Okay guys, what do you think is more of a better buy? A support 249 or a DMR? That doesn't work in my head. Um, I think it really depends on like, your kind of style of play. I personally like the DMR because I'm more of a precision guy. Mm -hmm. I don't really like spitting a lot of babies, I kind of like single tap, oh, one shot kills and yeah, stuff plus like that. some of us over here on the left, like, he, and this is our DMR babies. right here, so he's our, I mean, he has to take away the rifle. What would you like? I, I have to run a lot of mags, I waste ammo so, so much. If you want my opinion, I'd go with the DMR, because mm -hmm. they look legit. Even though yeah. saws are awesome, they're heavy as hell, and unless you plan to do a lot of run, like, a lot of weightlifting and stuff like that with them, you carry a lot of ammo on you. And generally, if yeah, you become sure. a support gunner, you automatically become an ammo guy for everyone else on the field. Like, they'll mm -hmm. come to you for ammo. BBs, magazines, etc., etc., so uh, I'd, I'd go DMR. Yeah, I, I just love the accuracy of a DMR, and then, uh... Just also it gives you that extra range of vision, and right. usually your kit, except for my in my case, because I carry a heavy kit. But most of the time, with a DMR setup, you're gonna have a lighter kit, right. which is just more mobility. Yep. And you don't have to move <clears throat> a lot. And the last question I think you said on there was gas or a which is better, AEG or gas? Um, there, I don't think there's any better. Realism. There's better ones. I think gas guns tail tailor more towards realism. Mm -hmm. If you look at like bolt action. Those bolt, real bolt action rifles and stuff like that, and like real um, gas sniper rifles and stuff like that. Even the uh, GBBs for like um, the AR platforms and everything like that. They're, that's pretty much as close as you're going to get to realistic for in terms of airsoft because you have to charge and everything, load a mag, it locks open on the last round, etc., etc. Doesn't hold as lot as much ammo as an AEG, so it, it yes, it can put you at a disadvantage when you go up against AEGs. But if you're looking for realism, you can't beat a gas blowback. Such as yeah, like, you know the charging handle. Yeah, just Every watch. Time. Yeah, just watch any of Jets videos. Yeah, right. <laughs> or also the other advantage of gas guns is for for example submachine guns that are too small to house a battery anywhere. The gas is a good alternative to use for that. So um, I don't yeah. think there's any better one. 
realistically. I just think um, it's really whatever you prefer. They're both really good. I have both. Hey, hey, I'm, hey, I'm, Dana. You want Dana? Yeah, I was picking Dana. one for you. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, so nice. Okay. Oh my god, you're welcome. Uh, that's upside down. <laughs> um, okay. From Scott Foster, one month ago. As a fellow Airsoft Floridian, what do you guys do about heat and dehydration during the game? Alright, I'll uh, let you start that off. We'll work away. Uh, okay. Jeez. So, basically, for heat and dehydration, well, I'm. If you're in Florida, you just know you better be drinking lots of water yeah. all the time, especially out in the heat. I mean, I play soccer and I'll usually down a gallon, maybe two gallons of water a day when I'm exercising. So basically you just got to keep chugging the water over and over again. Um, I also carry a, uh, in a pouch down on my waist on my battle belt I carry a bottle of water just out for out in the field because I don't have a uh, hydration pouch yet. That's one of the things I need to purchase. But Cole has a hydration pouch and he can tell you about that. Yeah, it sucks when you overload it, but uh, <laughs> for dehydration wise, if you, if you get too dehydrated, you're going to start getting cramps, and the cramps are going to suck, I would know that. Not to mention heat stroke, Jersey. which is very dangerous, so yeah. Yeah. even if you need, if you're feeling tired or exhausted or really hot, don't push yourself, just get off the field, go get a drink of water, yeah. no one's going to judge you for that, because mm. it'll it, be worth it later. It's going to be definitely what? worth it later, because you'll last longer too, so. Um, Once again with the cramps, it's yeah. a good way to, you know, like prevent them, is uh, potassium. Pretty much, you know, like bananas, uh, potassium pills, other sorts of that thing. They'll really uh, probably stop. Yeah, mostly. You have those, and that's what you do to get rid of it. The yeah, because okay. of the jerks operation. Oh yeah, that was hot. So what I would do, like I said, everyone said, obviously bring lots of water if you on the field. Hydrate a couple days beforehand. Hydrate the day of, and also if you're wearing like a really heavy kit. Hydrate, hydrate. Yeah, there you go. If you're wearing a really heavy kit, maybe just take some stuff off in the summer. I mean, in the winter, you can load whatever you want because it's cool and you don't have to worry about overheating. But maybe in the summer, maybe you just shed a battle belt. Maybe you kind of maybe focus on more of a... Yeah, maybe um, go to like a chest rig. Yeah, sort of yeah, just a chest rig. Yeah, just some sort of chest rig or something like that. Kind yeah. of things, and it has those mags up front because it allows your body to vent more air and stuff like that. So. Yeah, see, one of the things I found out recently is that uh, on those really super hot games... This kind of setup that I have right here, I mean, I soldier through it anyway, but this stuff... It gets hot. It gets really hot. It traps a lot of heat, these full plate carriers. And so, I mean, since uh, plates in the real combat field are very important and stuff, but in airsoft, you may as well just get a jungle rig or something for these really hot uh, scenarios because you don't need to block any real bullets. I mean, chest rigs, they already have nine pouches built in, mm -hmm. pretty much. Yeah, yeah. like and a jungle chest rig, it's got like 16 pouches. Yeah, just for plus extra molly space, so yeah. mm -hmm. that's really all you need. Alright, next question. That was a good one. Next question comes to us from... How many do we have left? Oh, we have a couple in there. Alright, next question comes to us from Nike Savage Beast, or Nike Savage Beast. Oh, Sorry for butchered that. What are your impressions on the ARX 160? It's ugly, but it looks it looks like it's good. That's uh, long. I've heard it. some bad things. What is it? There's like competition. It's, it's, the, it's I think he's referring to the new one. The, they the have two of them. There's like the competition. They have the competition one, and then you have like the 150 dollar one. Uh, it. I've heard good things about it. I've heard that it feels really comfortable. It looks really awkward, in my opinion, at least. Mm -hmm. It's not the prettiest gun out there, but. If it works, that's all I care about. I mean, I mean, looks are second nature. I've heard good things. I can't, I can't remember which one it is. Uh, let's say competition. I heard one of them is really good, like you know, a really nice one. The other one isn't isn't that well. It's one's one hundred and fifty dollars, which yeah. and the other one's like three hundred dollars. So I'm kind of like thinking maybe they. I don't really know. I, I really don't know a whole lot about it. I think it's a pretty good rifle. It's by Elite Force, so that's saying something. Yeah. I know it's so, pretty awesome in Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, you know, hardcore domination. I don't domination. even play that. Yeah, because Call of Duty is so realistic. Right. <laughs> it's, it's like Milsim. Um, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> it's like We're going to bring video games into this now. Oh, right. Go for it. I got it. I can't release. Go. Oh. Lee Hall. How do you break the fear of getting shot by a BB? You get shot. You get yeah. shot. I mean, just, I mean, I, I think all of us were afraid to get shot in the beginning. I mean, I think anyone that's ever played airsoft can relate to that. You, no one wants to get shot, but after a while, I think you just kind of. Oh, I kind of wanted shot. to get shot. Oh, you did? <laughs> I was, just, you know. I was when I first started. I was playing out there in like jeans and like a, a white shirt. I was terrified of getting. Like, I don't want to get hit. 
and then I got like the first month of playing, like, no, oh, this doesn't hurt at all. And I grew up on six acres, and we basically just had paintball guns and yeah. shotguns guns all the time. Yeah. yeah. And so I just kind of grew up getting shot. Yeah. Yeah. So, what is that called, like, narcissism or something, yeah. where you enjoy pain? I, I don't enjoy pain. No. I kind of like pain sometimes. That's not good. It's weird, like, Daniel. <laughs> it's really not good. But that's why I like fighting so much. Yeah, that's a good point. He's a, um, MMA? Or no, Taekwondo. Right. Oh, no. Okay. And Kendo, but that's more of a hobby. Right. Alright, next question then. We got a couple more in there. That's big. Oh, that's a long one. Oh, never mind. You just cut it. Really oh, I did? Yeah. Oh. What, uh, from Pyrai Hapanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanamanaman
The PDW, I, I know you like to use the PDW. Well, the, PD, the, the PDW, PDW is fun. Because you got the Polar like, Star and everything on it. Well, he has a Polar Star. But it, it does, I've noticed the BBs, they do like to spread after a certain well, distance. I was using a .2s, and I should have yeah. been using like yeah. two And also, use heavier BBs too, those are more accurate. Yeah, especially with DMRs, you yep. use heavier mm -hmm. BBs. Alright, and we have one more question that we'd like to address really quick. Everyone, all this is probably the most common question we get all the time. We're going to answer it today. Is, what is the best gun to use? Like, I'm starting out airsoft, what is the best gun to use? And we've brought this up a couple of times, I think, in our videos, but we're going to answer it one more time. And pretty much what I would recommend getting is a G&G &G Combat Machine Raider. Okay? Mm, like a GR-16. A GR or... like, yeah, exactly. They'll re they have them in long-barreled versions, they have them in short-barreled versions. They retail for around 100 and... Yeah, those are the good ones. Um, they retail for around $150. They're very reliable. They're durable. And wow. they're just well-rounded overall for the price. So... For the beginners that are on a budget and just getting into it and don't really know if you want to go really far into it and don't want to jump into a really expensive gun, go with a G&G CR-16 Raider. If you want to up your, if you have a little more money to spend, go with a KWA CQR that will run for about $200, but um, that's also a really good piece to have. And if you want to go even lower, Lancer Tactical makes some pretty good weapons for $100. Obviously, um, with Airsoft, you, you always go for... Quality over price. You look yeah. for the quality. Doesn't mean it has to be expensive for it to be good, but in terms of guns, generally, if you pay for a hundred dollar gun and a two hundred dollar gun, generally, what you will get out what you pay for it. Generally, mm -hmm. so what I recommend doing is get that G and G Raider for one hundred fifty dollars. It's a middle of the road. It's really good, really reliable. Has you know really good build inside, so it's not going to break on you really easily. You're not going to have to replace it. Getting a little more serious, maybe you can jump up to some more advanced guns, maybe some um, KWA weapons. Um, and if you go for like, you know, you like really enjoy it, and maybe bump up into a VFC kind of build. Fifteen hundred dollar gas yeah. sniper. Fifteen hundred dollar gas snipers. That may be a little stretching it a little bit. It's on Epic Deals for about a thousand now. That's looking into it. still uh, it's like I could like, 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 like upgrade my car. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm not gonna buy that. So right. yeah, I mean. In, uh, in agreement with what Matt's saying, I would definitely go with the GR-16 uh, yeah. or the G and G Raider. Um, with the with that type of gun, there's a great chance that you'll be using that way down the road. Yeah, Just with well, the amount I of still have mine. We're still through. using it today. Yeah. Well, mine was durable for about a year. Yeah, until you like threw in a river. I didn't throw in a river. Okay, I was well, walking to Paul the shelter. Was you fall on I was walking to the fire. You dropped it. Just it. Fell apart. Like the well, rail came off and the barrel. Cole came has a thing called Cole syndrome, where yeah, he basically breaks everything. Breaks everything. He touches. Yeah. So it's okay. water. <laughs> water. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but uh. Like, not just an M4 plan. Do we have... Where's your PDW? Where is it? I'll go there. No. You know, it's all out there. Whatever. Well, tell but, me. Uh, it's missing a charging handle. It's missing a fire selector. It's because it wants to go back in with the fuse. Mm -hmm. okay, he's missing um, a couple other parts on it, too. Is it's, that how you want to a little rusted. Rusted. I'm just joking. No. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, we cleaned it. not just, you know, M4 type deal. Like, if you want to run something else for your first gun, mm -hmm. such as maybe, like, a sniper or a... Uh, uh, AK, mm -hmm. maybe something. You're going like a that kind of loadout. Lance Tactical makes a hundred dollar AK, and that's yeah, pretty good. It's, that is actually really decent. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, for sniper rifle, there's jeez, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of options. Well, for sniper rifle. well, makes well, some really nice ones. ones. Well, AGM, that was my first sniper rifle. Yeah, my first have is it. still an AGM and it's yep. a workhorse. It's yeah, easy. AGM's actually really good. Right. I know there's an HFC gas sniper shoots like 650 FPS or okay. 150. That's not bad. But what I would definitely suggest though is overall just really, I mean, your gun choice and what kind of gun you're looking for is definitely up to you. But I would definitely suggest an AR platform. Yeah, to start out. To start because out. the amount of upgrades and the cheapness of the upgrades compared to like an AK motors, springs, rail interface systems, Plus, everything. You know, more people run in four, so yeah. it'd be easy and to get And if you need to change or, mags, yeah. that's what everyone's using now, so you don't have to worry about running out of ammo and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's our honest opinion. You want to start on airsoft, you're looking for a gun, we all recommend G&G, GR-15 Raiders, or maybe a CR, um, CQR by KWA, or maybe if you want to go even a little lower, Lancer Tactical makes some good pieces as well. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Yep. Alright, well I think I'll about wrap it up for our Q&A episode 7. Uh, if you guys got any questions for future videos, be sure to leave them in the comment section down below. And if we like them, we might just air them on the next show next time. So, thanks for watching. See you next time. Yeah.